What is up, Netrunner people? It has been a while. I know a lot of you really want to see more videos from me, but it's summertime. I am outside. I am do not have time to make videos very often now. Uh, but I have been still been playing Netrunner and been recording a lot of videos. I actually probably have like two tournaments worth of videos just sitting there uh, unuploaded. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, but just yesterday, I got back from the Boston Netrunner Regional Tournament that took place at Pandemonium Books and Games in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And I know a lot of you really want to know what happened at that Regionals. And I really want to tell you what happened at that Regionals. So we're putting those videos into priority mode. Gonna upload them first. Uh, so... Uh, just some background, Pandemonium Books and Games, I'd never been there before. Uh, whenever you go to a new store, you're a little worried, like, are they going to mismanage the tournament? Is there going to be problems? You know, you're spending 12 hours there. But Pandemonium Books and Games was great. They ran the tournament extremely well. Uh, the judges knew the rules. They didn't really make any mistakes whatsoever. The tournament ran as quickly as it reasonably could. Uh, they really helped me out when I wanted to video things. They were more than happy to accommodate us. Uh, excellent store. If you want to play Netrunner and you live in Boston, Massachusetts, Cambridge area, uh, that's a great store to go to. Anyway, so uh, what happened at the regionals? Well, what I have for you, or at least what I recorded, uh, we played six rounds of Swiss, followed by a cut to 16 elimination using the newest uh, Fantasy Flight Netrunner tournament rules, which I believe are version... I forget the version number. It doesn't really matter. It's the ones where you only play uh, one side of the elimination, right? Uh, the, the, the double elimination loser's bracket style. Uh, this tournament took place on June 21st, 2014. Um... So, you should be able to figure it out based on that. Okay, so I got there, uh, and in the first round, my opponent was a no-show. It was someone who had pre-registered and did not show. So I got a crap buy. I didn't have a super buy. I didn't win any store championships, even though I came in second in two of them and fourth in another. Um, so I had the a bad buy, but I still got four prestige points. So here I am playing against uh, Chris M. You're going to see more of Chris M. in some later videos. Uh, our first game... I ran against his Tenon Institute with my Kate, and I won. I think he just had a bad draw. There was just agendas, and I ran HQ, and I got an agenda pretty much every time. Um, so here's the second game of round... My second game of round two of Swiss. Um, against Chris M. So Chris M is an awesome dude, right? Uh, not only, are, like I said, you're going to see more of him in some later videos... Uh, from this regional, but he is the guy who makes the Netrunner Meteor deck builder. Uh, I know it's not everyone's favorite, but it's my favorite, uh, and I'm not saying that just because he was there uh, and I met him and played with him, right? I've always used it as my favorite deck builder uh, for Netrunner, and the reason for that is because it's just so fast to enter in a deck. You Like, three data, you just use all keyboard, and you just type number, you press a number, then you type the name of the card and press enter, and then it moves the cursor right back into the number box. So you could fill out a deck list like three Caprice, two Sansan, four, not four anything, but you get the idea. Um, so it was really great to meet him. He's a great player. Uh, pretty much everyone we met there was great. Um, you're probably going to ask about his totally sweet playmat, <laughs> which is... Art, really amazing artwork from a really not good card. <laughs> but yeah, he's playing Andromeda. So what happened? Let's talk about this game. I had an initial draw. And I really wanted to keep it. I really wanted to keep it because it was all money. It's basically an all money draw, right? Uh, but I was worried I was going to get siphoned like crazy or who knows what. Bad news. Uh, and who knows, you know, the way people play Andromeda these days, they might have a planned assault indexing or something um right and i had no ice in that original hand so i mulliganed i got one ice but i got a sweep sweep so it wasn't too bad i think i'm holding an astro under breaking news though um or it's not yeah it's not it's not the greatest so he hits r and d and he has an r and d interface turn one yep so it was gonna be bad either way but i guess one ice is better than no ice 
But at least I, ha I got the first, the first turn sweep streak was in the original hand and the mulligan hand, so not too bad against Andromeda. Um, okay, gonna start a little remote. Uh, it looks like I put a sand sand in there. And I'm putting something else in there. Is it an ash? Is that an agenda? What else did I put in there? We'll find out. Hmm. Alright, he's running it. He took the bait. RSVP. Oh, yes. You, which one does he want to access? That one? That's an NAPD. You can't take that. And that's a sand sand. You can't take that either. Figured the NAPD, I guess, putting it there, it's safer than uh, keeping it in my hand. All right, he's going to run HQ. All right, I guess I just have to pray at this point. And, oh, there goes Beal. Yep. I guess a hand of all money is better than a hand with agendas and not enough ice. Okay, he's running R&D. Caduceus Pad Campaign. Man, would I love to have those cards already in my hand. I think that HQ Ice is a toll booth. Uh, could I have resed it? Maybe, I, I don't know. If, if it was a toll booth, maybe I could have re I don't know. If it was a toll booth, I would have resed it if I could afford it. Yeah, what was I... I don't know what was going on there. Who knows what ice that is. Well, he knows that's a Caduceus. <laughs> and he knows that's a pad campaign. There's no mysteries here. Okay, ran, saw the last card, couldn't do anything about it. And he gets started working with Senor Lee. And security testing. There's a lot of security testing going on uh, at this tournament. The card is really good. Um, but at least if you can tag the runner, you can get rid of it, and that can set them back really hard. You know, a lot of cor a lot of um, criminals basically have that and a desperado, and every turn they'll run one server, be it a pad campaign or your archives or somewhere, and get three credits with one click, and that's really all the money they're going to need, um, three credits for one click. Maybe they'll even get data suckers off that. So if you can shut it down... Um, by getting rid of their security testing, and they can't get another one. Uh, you know, like, they put security testing in their deck to replace some other economy card. You can really hurt their economy pretty severely um, by destroying it. All right. I mean, if I'm going to play pad campaign, I sort of have to let him play security testing unless I ice up all my pad campaigns, which is annoying. Oh, here we go. Wah. There's the toll booth. Okay, so I guess it wasn't a toll booth. Oh, you know what it was on uh, HQ? It was an Ichi 1.0. So I didn't want to res it for no reason. Uh, just to clear a ferry, and then every subsequent run, he would just, um, you know, like he doesn't even have programs, right? That Ichi 1 is worthless. That was the, that was the ice I had in my starting hand. Yeah. So he's got six and I got zero. Not good times. Uh, I guess I could try to score the NAPD, but um, yeah. See, I'm putting an ice there in front of the RSVP because theoretically he could suddenly. Uh, he's at six, so he could suddenly like drop a code gate breaker or an inside job and be like, "Oh, I'll take your NAPD game over." All right. So I'm protecting that with a with a second ice. He gets another fairy. He's going to run R&D, use his fairy, and he's got four credits, so that's another NEPD, game over. 
It happens. Um, it happens. All right, so I posted just this quick game from my second round uh, of Swiss just to uh, intro you to this regionals to let you know that uh, the rest of the matches from this regionals, including uh, one video from every round of elimination, not necessarily the top game, uh, but one video from every round of elimination will be uploaded after all of the Swiss rounds that I played in uh, are uploaded. So I have the rest of the games recorded. The only game I lost was that first game. Uh, and this is the second round, what well, was the second round, uh, the first round I had to buy. Boston Regionals, you are going to see some stuff that you have never seen. I'm telling you, like, even I'm excited to watch these games again. Um, and I've seen them before, I was there. Uh, I watched most of these, and I played, I watched every one of these games. Uh, so, look forward to it. Hope your body is ready.